Okay, um, so hopefully my audio is working here. I uh, had a little bit of late start. Um, so um, I'm planning on probably, um, I won't, I did, I haven't got everybody's assignment stuff back yet. Um, uh, I'll probably just post an example solution for that. Uh, so let's just jump into assignment eight here, see if anybody has questions on this, uh, kind of go over the usual stuff on it. So, so you know, we just finished doing stacks. Um, so our next assignment here is on queues. Um, So let me go ahead and uh, accept it here and get it set up as usual. So there we go. So for this assignment, um, we're going to be going back to kind of implementing some member methods. Um, for our queue data structure. Um, so we're not, not going to be using queues as much. Uh, we're actually going to be uh, implementing some queues, but we're going to go back to implementing some stuff in the uh, array-based implementation of the queue. So uh, anyway, so I've, I've accepted the assignment. So let's go ahead and find the checklist here. Um, let's go ahead and get... Uh, our dev box going. Close off previous one here. Oh. Um, and let's go ahead and clone it. into our sync folder. Looks like my network might be a little bit slow today. So open it up, um, then we'll use do our normal. So let's uh, go ahead and configure. Figure the project first. And then check everything's building and running. So yeah, I mean, you normally shouldn't get warnings like this about having to configure IntelliSense, assuming everything's up and working. Uh, although sometimes you know it takes a little while for the the intelligence to parse stuff and things. So, um, so yeah, everything should build. The test should run. Uh, so again, for this one, we've got some tests uncommented, um, and you should check that your intelligence um, is working. I still have a lot of people having problems with this for some reason. But you know your basic things are you know if IntelliSense is working, it will detect um, um, errors, and if the auto formatter is working, when you save the file, it should reindent things. Um, so, all right, um, and then I guess we can go ahead and uh, create the first task is the last thing on the checklist usually. So, uh, the first issue for task one. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll get our pull request up um, and associate that issue, and then we're ready. We should be ready to go then. So, um, all right. So there's a longer kind of introduction description here than normal um, because basically uh, we, we've got uh, how many tasks? We've got um, um, like, like five tasks uh, this time to complete 
for the assignment. Uh, the first couple of tasks, the first three or four, uh, we're going to be actually implementing some things in an array-based implementation of the queue. Um, so, um, um, so for our array-based implementation of the queue here, uh, there's a bit of a description. So. Basically, we have a problem compared to when we use the array-based implementation of the stack, although you didn't have to write any code for the array-based implementation of the stack uh, for the previous assignment. You just, um, uh, we did, we, we implemented the push and the pop for the list-based implementation. So if, um, for the array-based implementation of the stack, if you didn't look at it, what we were doing is both the push and the pop, we were putting um, on the last value of the array. Um, uh, in memory that we were using for our array-based implementation. And that works fine, and, and we would grow the array if we needed, if, if it was currently full, so we would double the size. Uh, but that, that allows, for the most part, except for when we had to grow, uh, you know, double the size of the, the, the our dynamically allocated memory. Um, um, so when, when, whenever you had to grow it, that would take extra time. But normally, like our pushes and pops for our array-based stack would be constant time, because we could just... Uh, either put it into the, the the next index past the current last one, or we just decrement our size to kind of pop off that last index. Um, for the queue, we've got a bit of a, a problem. We, we need to be able to, uh, in order to have our operations be relatively close to constant time, we need to be able to, you know, uh, both put things on one end and take them off of the other. So we have to really be able to do things on both ends of the array. Um, and um, we would like to avoid shifting, right? So basically, for example, if we always uh, popped things off of the, the, the last index of the array and we pushed them to index zero, Unfortunately, you know, pushing to index zero um, would mean that we would have to shift everything up by one uh, in order to do the push operation. So that would mean that, that the push operation is always a big O of N uh, time complexity. Um, and it doesn't help to go the other way. So um, if we wanted to always uh, push things onto the highest index of the array, um, uh, we would have the problem then um, um, uh, trying to pop things off the front. Because if we want to pop things off the front in that case, again, we, we want to remove the item at index zero, but that would mean that we'd have to shift everything down by one index to keep um, from having, you know, uh, our beginner end uh, not be at zero. So what the, the common implementation that's done uh, instead is to use a, is to treat the array as a circular buffer. All right, so in order to do that, we're actually going to be keeping track of two indexes in the array. So the index for the front of the queue and the index for the back of the queue, right? Um, so kind of as shown here. So that this will allow us to mostly do both the pushes and the pop, not the pushes. So for our queue, we call it in queue and DQ. So this, this will allow both the in queues and the DQs to usually be uh, constant time, which we like, which we'd like to try to keep it at. Except again, if the array is full, we do have to take the time to double the backing storage and copy everything over. But um, uh, assuming we've got um, some room, uh, in queue and DQ can normally be constant time operations if we use treat it as a circular buffer. Uh, our, our array here. So the way that works, you know, it's described here. And, and like I said, this description is a little bigger than normal. But for example, if we enqueue items 5732, we're going to be enqueuing things um, um, to the index and increasing it. So uh, initially, if we enqueued 5732 in that order, 5 would be at the front fob of the queue, followed by 732. And, and 2 would end up, you know, if initially both front and back index were pointing to 0, uh, we would end up with the front index still pointing to zero after we enqueued those four items, and the back index would be at index three, having the value two on there, right? And then, so what we're going to be doing, like I said, we, we, we're going to keep a front and a back index. So, like, if we dequeue a value to, to get the five off the front of the queue, we would just increase the front index. So, every time we enqueue or dequeue an item, we're going to increase 
You know, so when we enqueue a new item, we increase the back index by one. And when we dequeue an item from the front of the queue, we, we dequeue, we, we, uh, we're going to increase the front index by one. Right. Um, so, for example, uh, if if we have this queue here and then we push uh, three more items, um, a uh, two and then an eight. Um, so after we push the two and the eight, so assume that the, the current size, the allocation size is five here. So we've only got five um, locations in our array, uh, index zero to four, right? So after we push the two and the eight, front index is still at one. We've got four values in there, seven, three, two, and back index would be at eight. So uh, if we push one more item, so at that point, we've actually, the, the array isn't full. Uh, the allocation size is five, but we've only got four items in there from index one to four, so the seven, three, two, eight. So if we, we could still push one more item, and this is where our first example, where we're treating this as a circular buffer. So since um, uh, before, the picture that's shown here, you know, back index is pointing to index four. That is the, the last maximum um, uh, index for an allocation size of five. So if we push one more value, a one on there, uh, we don't have to grow our array yet, but we do need to wrap back and around. So what happens is when we increase back index by one, uh, it, it becomes five, but that's too big for an, um, an array that has an allocation size of five. So it has to wrap back around to, to be pointing to index zero then, right? So now after we've, we've, we've got five values on our queue, the front value is, is the seven followed by three, two, eight. And then the back value, the trapped around the queue is one. And, and our, our, our queue is actually full, or as I should say, the array is actually full at this point. So we could, we could pop, uh, sorry, we could dequeue items off the queue with no problem. Um, and again, you know, this is a constant time operation. So if a DQ happened, even though the, the array is currently full, all we do is increment front index by one. Um, and now it points at two and, and three is now the front of the queue. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if we need to enqueue another item here and the array is full, we would first have to allocate a new array and then copy these from the old array to the new array before we would have enough room to then uh, enqueue a new item. All right. Um, so anyway, so, so I want to talk about the um, um, tasks here, but but you need to understand kind of what we're doing here. You're going to be implementing uh, like the MQ and the DQ here. So you have to implement these by treating the array um, as a circular buffer. Um, so one of the easiest ways to do that is every time, every time you enqueue an item, um, like we were shown here, every time you enqueue an item, you're going to increase the back index by one. So you have to add one to the back index, but then also every time you do that, you have to be careful that, you know, if I've gone, you know, if, if my back index was four and I enqueue another item, um, I've increased the index to five, but if the allocation is just size is five, um, that's no longer valid. We need to wrap it back around to zero. So you could do this with an if statement, uh, but you know, if you look at code, people that have coded stuff up to treat things as circular buffers, you'll most likely see them often using the uh, mod, uh, the modulus operation. So by, by doing a modulus by the allocation size, you know, which is five, that, that gives the remainder. So, you know, if, if we increase the back index to five and we divide by five, it goes in one time with a remainder of zero, right? So the mod is really kind of giving the remainder from an integer division, um, but that does what we want. It, it, it wraps the index back around um, if we've gone past the end of our circular um, buffer here. Uh, but yeah, so kind of uh, it's common for people to incorrectly do the mod by the size instead of the allocation size, but that's not correct. Um, the, the allocation size tells you how many items are in the array. Uh, size is just how many actual values. Uh, it's a, uh, to restate that, size is how many actual values are in your queue. But the allocation size is the total number of elements that you've currently got allocated for the array. And, and that's what you need to know whether you've gone past the end or not. So, so that's what you need to be modded by um, or 
equivalently doing just an explicit check of the um, the back index is uh, too big and going wrapping back around to zero. So. Um, you have to do the same. You have to do the same thing for for the uh, DQ. So when you DQ, you're going to be increasing the front index by one. Uh, but it is possible. So again, like like here, where I've got the um, um, the queue has seven, five items in it, um, and my uh, array is actually full. But I, I could actually DQ four times. So I DQ get the uh, item seven off. Front index comes two, pointing to item three, and I could DQ again. So now we're at index three. I could DQ again. We're not index uh, uh, four. Um, if I DQ one more time. Um, um, we're we're going to be DQing the item eight off there. Front index would get increased to five, but it should wrap back around. So at that point, both the front and the back index, uh, there's only one item on the queue, and both front and back index are pointing to uh, index zero with the, the last remaining item on our queue there. Um, So, so yeah, in this case, I mean, linked lists are actually a, a bit cleaner code for queues than, than arrays, because really to get the best performance, you have to implement it in the circular buffer fa fashion. So that makes, makes our NQ and DQ a little bit more complex to, to um, 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 treat the array as a circular buffer. So, um, all right, so, and then later on, we're gonna actually be implementing a priority queue, uh, but uh, let me come back to that. So let's, let's get started on the task. I've been talking long enough about these. So um, if, um, so the first three tasks, I believe we're just adding um, uh, the DQ and the NQ um, to our uh, array-based queue, uh, but we're starting by adding in the front accessor method. Okay, which um, should be pretty much the same as like the front, uh, get front item that we had like two assignments ago when we just implemented the um, um, list, right? So, so, so front is basically just an accessor method um, uh, similar to like getting the top item um, from our stack. But in this case, we're gonna be using the front index uh, to determine what the item is at the front of the queue. So. Um, so let's kind of start on task one here uh, by uncommenting it. Um, so the basic signature of front is, you know, if I've got a queue with a single item on it, seven, uh, if I ask for the front item, that should be the item at the front of the key, so it should return seven, right? So, so front, um, kind of like top uh, for our stack, uh, doesn't actually take the item off the front. That's you have to use DQ to actually remove the item. Um, it just accesses and tells us what the item is. The value is at the front of the queue here. So, um, so oh, um, so like in our uh, previous two assignments, you know, we, we've got uh, an object-oriented hierarchy here. So we've got a base queue class uh, defined in the, the queue.hpp and the queue.cpp files, uh, which defines the interface. Um, so we really should, you know, implementing each of these tasks, we really should uncomment the, the virtual um, declaration of our front method uh, from the base class before we implement it for each of these tasks. So I'll uncomment it for the front. But um, our signature, um, so we're implementing stuff in the AQ, the array-based queue, uh, but our signature uh, for all these methods is going to be the same as what we would see in LQ. So one easy way to do it is to just copy the, the declaration from LQ. So in this case, you know, the front doesn't make it, take any parameters as input, it returns, we're using template classes again here. So it returns the front item. Um, and since our, it's a, we've got a queue of some type T, the front item is gonna be some templatized type T here. And, but notice also this is a constant number function, right? So calling the front item doesn't actually remove it or modify the queue. It's just getting information about what the value is of the front item here. So,
So we'll put it here, the same spot that we had it on the others. Um, and, you know, uh, our implementation um, will be different, but um, um, it'll be pretty similar to the front method for the link list, link list based queue. So um, I'll start by copying and pasting as a, a way to save a little bit of typing. So, um, so you know, let's just examine like the, the front for the, well, you know, for the, the front for the link list based um, queue um, is relatively, so like we had for the stack, we've got uh, pointers for the link list based version, uh, pointer to the, the front and a pointer to the back. Um, and um, if we want to just access, get the front item, we just get the, uh, the, the pointer to the front node, access the value and return that. Um, although, um, you know, um, like usual, or you should be used to by now, uh, we do ask that uh, you do a little bit of error checking. So if, if the queue is empty, we ask that you throw an exception and you can actually reuse the same code here in both the array based and the uh, um, link list based. So we can get a leg up by copying all that. Um, for our array-based uh, implementation of the front method here. Um, but you know, I, had, I still had pe some people, you know, didn't check the, the documentation. So check that we don't have anything that's specific to um, our linkless-based queue uh, here when we describe it. So I mean, this documentation doesn't really mention anything about the array or how it's used or anything. So otherwise, so, so we're implementing um, our front method in the AQ, um, and we need to do something different to return the value at the front here, which I won't give you, but I'll stub it out by just returning a, we'll construct a, a, an empty T here um, and just return that as our result. So that should be enough to actually uh, allow us to compile uh, and run this code. Um, also, I should check my error messages here. So that stub function should compile without any um, compile errors or link uh, errors um, and uh, should run our tests, um, but it'll just be failing since um, since I'm returning an empty T, whatever the type is, we end up getting zeros, for example, if we have Q's events oh, being returned there. All right, so um, so for the array-based implementation of the Q, you know, what you need to know is that we've got um, um, a couple of member variables, including the front, the most important being the front index and the, the back index, and also the array of values um, that, that we're going to treat as a circular buffer here. So, um, but for the front method, I mean, really all you need to do is look in the values at whatever the front index is pointing to and nothing else, right? So you're not going to be actually um, modifying the queue or, or incrementing front index, you just need to find the value that whatever front index is pointing to and return that um, 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 as the result from calling front here. Um, all right, and then the second two methods are to implement the in queue and the DQ. So let me talk just a little bit about those, although I won't, um, um, I won't, uh, so, so you should be able to kind of do the same thing I did um, to get your stub function for the NQ and the DQ to be able to compile and run. So DQ um, um, doesn't take any parameters as input, doesn't return a result, but you know, if I've got three values on the queue, if I DQ the item at the front, uh, and so I had 42.11.7 on there, um, the front item is 42. So if I do a DQ, I should reduce the size of the queue by one and I, get that front value off of there now um, after we've dequeued an item. Um, uh, 
So DQ is a void function. It doesn't take any parameters, um, but it's not a constant member function or anything. So for example, um, you should have the same signature as what you find in um, the linked list space Q. Um, so uh, oh, let's, um, let me quickly kind of as an aside, look at the implementation of the DQ uh, for the uh, linked list based. So again, this will be similar to um, the, um, uh, where's my DQ here? Um, this will be similar to the pop that we did for the linked list base that you had to implement for the linked list base to the stack. Um, so we're checking if it's empty, and if it's it is empty, basically we're, we're the 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 item at the front of our linked list uh, we treat um, as the front of the queue. So that's the one that we want to DQ um, if we're uh, if we're trying to DQ from our queue here. So we do a similar thing that you should have implemented for pop. Um, we um, um, Remember the front node because we need to call delete on it. Uh, we repoint front node to uh, to be the next node in the linked list uh, by following the next member pointer there. Reduce the size by one. So, um, so I gave a comment for some people that it was a little bit redundant uh, because it was here. In fact, I really don't need. Um, if there was only one node in my queue here and I'm dequeuing it, uh, as long as we're always maintaining that the next pointer of the last node in the linked list is null, this would end up assigning null pointer to front node already. So if, if my um, queue did become empty, front node should have gotten assigned the null pointer already from that statement. So this is redundant uh, or should be, doesn't hurt anything. No, but that, if if I gave a comment to you about about that on your stack, um, that's kind of what I was talking about. But um, um, the, the, it is necessary in this version of this because um, uh, we need to correctly keep the front node and the back node pointing to the null pointer if the queue becomes empty. So um, the the back node wouldn't get updated by this statement here if the queue became empty. So we do need to make certain back node is pointing to the null pointer or else back node would still be pointing to what front node was before we removed it uh, but we just deleted that so that would be an invalid reference there so. um anyway so that that's our dq so to talk about uh, i'm only going to just discuss the um, implementation so for the array based one uh, you do have to do a similar check again. So again, you can copy this code and use this as a starting point. Um, so if it's already empty, you should throw the same exception. Basically, you do, we do have to decrement the size by one. So after you uh, dequeue the item, but the implementation for the array-based queue is uh, we want to increment the front index by one, wrapping it around the buffer, you know, wrapping it around the allocation size if, if we end up incrementing it past the end of our array, right? Um, and uh, really, that, really, that's all you need to do for DQ, except also, um, as is described here, I'm sure, um, Um, so, so you do have to check if it's empty and throw a queue empty exception. Uh, so, oh no, so yeah, I mean, that that really is it. So, so the the wrinkle is is that you just have to make certain that you wrap front index around if if um, it's gone past the end of the buffer there. So, because when you're dequeuing an item, uh, you're actually reducing the size of the, reducing the number of items in the queue. So you you don't have to worry about uh, running out of room. But so that brings me to, brings me to the in queue. I've, I've, I've been thinking ahead a little bit there. So finally, the, the third task here, um, we need to in queue an item. So um, so the basic way that in queue works is that um, you know, so like if we have an empty queue, if we in queue an item, um, it'll be the one and only item at the front and the back of the queue. But now if we have a queue with a single item seven on there and we in queue another item, we'll now end up with seven still at the front. 
We'll have two items on the queue with seven at the front and 11 at the back. So, um, so MQ um, has a similar signature DQ, except we do have to provide the value that we want to put onto the back of the queue there. So, so we passed in a reference, a constant reference to some type T of the new item that we want to enqueue onto our queue, right? Um, so our linked list base version of enqueue would be, um, well, um, it won't give you mu as much of a starting point because um, you do have to increment the size by one, but otherwise you're gonna be doing something uh, uh, different than all the linked list manipulation that you do for the MQ, right? So this should be pretty similar to the um, um, uh, the push method that we did that you had to do for the previous assignment um, um, here. So, so we're basically doing something similar to what we did for push, uh, but in this case, we're actually pushing a, a new node to the back uh, in order to do the queue, where for the stack, you were pushing new nodes to the front of the linked list. Um, um, so for the array base queue, um, you need to basically um, increment the back index by one, being careful to wrap it around. So back index uh, should always be pointing, if I can go back up to my picture here, uh, good. Back index is always pointing to the last item that actually has a value in it. Okay, so what you first do is increment back index, possibly wrapping it around, right? But then after you've incremented, back index should be pointing to a, a location that's empty currently um, in our allocated array. So that's that's the index that you want to put the new item or the new value into after you increment back index. All right. But before you do that, as is described here. Um, um, there is one problem because if you are in queuing a new item, it, it could be possible that, for example, my current allocation is five, uh, my current allocation size is five, and I've currently got five items in the queue. So in that case, if I increment my back index by one, um, it's going to be pointing to the item that's at my front of the queue. Um, and if I were to save it in there, I'd actually be overriding my front item, right? So when the queue is full, I need to do a first step before I can do what we just described here of incrementing the back index and adding the item. But we've given you a method like we did before. So basically, before you do anything for the in queue, call the grow queue if needed. So this will check if the queue is currently full. So if the size is equal to the allocation size. And if it is, it will allocate, you know, it will allocate a new array that's like double the size and copy all the values from the old array to the new array. Uh, so after grow queue, if needed, returns, you should be safe to do what we described there then, you know, incrementing the back index, wrapping it around if needed, and putting the new value um, in there into the back index. All right. Um, All right. So I, I know that uh, that uh, my student that's here did have a question here. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of save that till uh, after I kind of finish up talking about the the uh, assignment eight here, um, uh, the tasks here. Uh, but uh, yeah, any questions about the first three? So the first three were basically implementing three member methods in our array based queue. So the next two tasks then, uh, we're doing something uh, a little bit different. We're going to actually be creating a new class, a new type of queue called a priority queue, which um, um, if you did the readings or the lecture videos, we talked a little bit about priority queue. So a priority queue is a type of queue where you enqueue items um, and then when you dequeue items, they come out um, in some particular order. Um, so, all right, so, um, 
So uh, I had some questions here. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about that in a second here. Or we'll look at your specific questions here once I stop the recording. So, um, so, so for priority queue, when you do a DQ, they, they come out uh, in order of priority. So, that, so whatever the highest priority item is on the queue would come out um, when you do a DQ, okay? So the way we're going to be implementing so we're going to be defining priority just by um, the, the regular sorting order of the values, right? So if we have a queue of integers, the, 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 the largest integer is going to be considered the highest priority item in the queue, right? Um, and if we have a queue of strings, the, the, the item that's alphabetically last in the alphabet would be the, the one with the highest priority, basically. Um, and uh, again, we can look at, uh, so, so here the, the tests uh, will be in the um, um, test A priority queue and test L priority queue. So we're actually going to be uh, implementing one member method for an array-based priority queue and one me member method for a linked list-based priority queue here. Um, so your task four is to implement the uh, DQ um, method. Um, or sorry, the NQ method for the um, array-based priority queue. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're doing the NQ here. So, um, what we're basically going to be doing is uh, modifying the NQ method so that instead of just enqueuing it always to the back of the queue, uh, both for the array base and the linked list base version. Uh, we're going to enqueue it, but we're going to keep the queue in sorted order from highest priority to lowest priority. So you see that after we've enqueued uh, four items, four integers here, since we have a queue of integers, um, that they're in sorted order with the highest integer, you know, the highest priority item is at the front of the queue down to the smallest integer ends up at the back of the queue, okay? So uh, instead of always enqueuing, becoming the last item, what, what we do is we override, we modify the enqueue method to, uh, we first just insert it at the back, but, you know, like, for example, um, um, so, so like here, when we enqueued the five, we had the values 10, 7, 5, 3 on the queue, uh, prior to enqueuing another five, okay? So so the, the basic thing that we're going to do for the NQ for the array-based one is we'll do the same thing that you did for the NQ um, for task uh, two. Um, we'll just NQ the five at the back of the, the queue. Um, you know, so we'll put it, you know, we'll in increment the back index um, and, and put the value, the new value um, at that location. So we, we end up with five at the back of the queue here. But then we'll do an additional step that we will shift it or bubble it up. I kind of think of it as like bubbling it up. Um, so, you know, we, we would compare five with one. Um, and if five is bigger, we would swap those. Or, or another way you can think of that is, is just keep five in a separate place. And if, if, if it's bigger, then you shift one uh, down by one location. You know, and then, then we would compare five with three and shift three. Uh, uh, up, uh, we're actually shifting these up by an index. Um, and then when we compare five with five, um, they're equal. So we would actually uh, insert the five at that point, right? So for both the linked list version and the array based version, you know, what we're doing for the NQ is we, we do the same thing that we did before, but then we um, shift the item in order to main, keep the, the queue uh, in sorted order from highest value to lowest value. So that way that the DQ is still a constant time operation. So if you take the item that's off the front of the sorted queue, that will always be the, high, the item with the highest value or the highest priority. Um, but it does make our MQ uh, method um, uh, big O of N, right? Because the shift, we might have to actually shift all these items. You know, so if, if, I, if I have a queue like this, now if I'm inserting 15, I'm gonna actually have to shift all the items up by one to get, 15 to the front of the queue. So. Um, but yeah, and so that's kind of the worst case. Um, so 
So we kind of described the algorithm a little bit on here, but um, let, let's let me kind of get you started on how you would declare these. So to do this one, um, you'll see that there is a header file defined for um, the the L priority queue and the A priority queue. So our first task we're, we're adding some we're adding the enqueue method for the A priority queue. So if you look in there. Um, um, there's some things declared already. Oh, and notice that a priority queue publicly inherits from the regular array based queue. So an a priority queue is just uh, an array based queue. So it has all of the variables. So it has the front index, the back index, and inherits all that stuff and all the, the implementations of all the member functions uh, from the a base queue. But what we're going to do is we're going to give a different implementation of MQ, overriding the MQ um, in our um, parent class, right? So um, what that means is that um, um, our signature, we need to add in um, an MQ method. Um, so yeah, so I never, I guess, yeah, I never showed adding it uh, to the header file here. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pull it from the, um, uh, uh, the LQ here. So, um, so, you know, for all these, all these, you know, priority queues, A, A priority queue, L priority queue, AQ, LQ, they're all queues. They're all implementing the uh, abstract base class API defined in the queue header file, right? So, so the signature is still going to be the same for our NQ method uh, when we do it for our uh, priority queue, right? So you only, you basically only have to add that, right? Now, um, and then a good way to get started on your NQ method for the, the task four is to copy uh, your working implementation of NQ from the AQ uh, that you did for task two, right? Because that gets you 90% of the way there. Right, even though you know I don't have the implementation here because I didn't show you how to implement the NQ, um, but you know your NQ for uh, for an array based queue should basically just um, increment the back index by one, wrapping around if needed, and then putting that new value into that back index. Right, so you want to do the same thing. I'm also calling the grow list if needed before that, uh, just in case the the queue is currently full, uh, in order to make sure we have enough room to add another item. After you do that, then though, you need to um, um, compare the value that's at the end um, and, and swap it uh, and keep swapping that up. So, so basically what you're going to be doing though is um, um, there, there's some discussion of, of how you can go about the algorithm in here in the uh, assignment description here. Um, but, um, and, and you have to be careful. So for example, let me go kind of for the simplest case here. So let's say, so yeah, it kind of it just happens that these three values are already sorted. So if I insert like a five here, back index would get incremented to four and I'm gonna have five here. So I'd have to, I, you have to start at back index. And so notice that you're going backwards. Uh, so, so you're decreasing. So I have to compare index four to index three the value five to the value two and then swap them um, if they're out of order. Uh, and then I have to compare the value three to two and you know do that. Uh, but um, you have to be careful that you always wrap things around uh, when you're doing that kind of stuff. So let's say that um, this is our situation here. Um, but um, our array is in order, and uh, let's let's just say that that was a one, so that you know when seven three two one one, and let's say we um, enqueue like a five again here, right? So so again, I I need to start at the back index. So compare this five to the one and swap them. At this point though, I need to be comparing. You know, need to wrap back around, but in the other direction. So I have to compare the value to index zero to the value at index uh, uh, four in this example, um, right? And then, you know, so, so swap the five, five with that value if it's out of order, and then keep doing that, right? So that's where it gets tricky. You have, you have to, because of, of, you need to treat this as a circular buffer always, 
um, in order to uh, shift or swap those values in the right place, you have to always, you know, so you can't really use a simple for loop or anything like that. You have to start at the back index, go up to the front index, um, and compare these these um, uh, uh, two locations and swap them if, if they need be. Um, being careful at every step, every time you uh, decrement your index, you need to make certain that you uh, wrap around, right? And, and if you do it, in the way that's suggested, that means that instead of incrementing the, like the, the indexes, you're gonna be decrementing that as you're doing your shifting or swapping. Uh, so for that, you can't really use the modulus operator. Um, so for example, if you're decrementing, um, your index might become go from zero, you subtract one becomes minus one. So that means you need to wrap it back around to whatever the allocation size minus one is. That's, that's the largest um, valid index. So, so yeah, if you're going in this direction, you'll probably have to use like an if statement. Um, um, and if it gets less than zero, wrap it back around um, to the, the, the largest index in the array based on the allocation size. Um, so, and, and a lot of people try and use a, a simple for loop here, which, you know, again, you have to be careful about, you really, you know, you, you can't, at, at most, you're going to have to shift, you know, whatever the size is, whatever the, the, the number of items that are in the queue, that's the most that you have to shift, but you might not have to shift all those. So you might end up stopping before you get, um, um, yeah. so, so again, like, like here, if I've got five items and I insert a six item, the most I have to do is six, well, five shifts to get that item. And so if my new item was bigger than what was, was the new biggest item or highest priority, I have to shift all existing five items or, or, or swap all existing five items to get it up to that position there. Um, but you might stop before that, right? So, so, um, so it, it's probably best to think of this more in terms of like a while loop that keeps doing it as long as the item that you're currently comparing um, needs to be swapped or shifted and, and stop as soon as you find that it's at, it's got shifted to its correct location. So, um, Okay, uh, and then kind of just to wrap this up, um, then um, I ask you to also implement the NQ, but back for the linked list. So everything up to now, you've been doing stuff with the array-based uh, circular buffer, the array-based queue. So, so I kind of ask you to shift gears and go back to thinking about linked lists. So here, again, you can start by using the NQ method uh, that was already given to you for the LQ. Um, so like if we go back and look at our LQ implementation of um, NQ method, uh, this will get you 90% of the way. Um, basically what it does is, so NQ needs to put the new value um, at, at the front of the link of the linked list here, right? And increase the size by one. But uh, again here, so, so now we're kind of be, gonna be working in the opposite direction but from what I was suggesting for the A base Q. So it could be, so this becomes the new front item but it might be that this new front item is not the highest priority item. So now you need to uh, compare um, items from the front to the back of your linked list um, and, and you could use just swapping. So you could swap the values. So, so like, like this value and next value, um, you know, this is all described in there. Um, another approach is just to create the new node and then to iterate through the linked list until you find the location where that node should be inserted. Um, and then just do one uh, linked list manipulation to insert it at the correct location. Uh, so in that case though, you have to be careful that you know, so you, you might have some special cases where the new node is the front. Uh, it is the highest priority node, so it becomes the new front node, or that new node could be be the end up needing to be the last node uh, in the list because it's the lowest priority in, item in your queue. So, so it might end up being the uh, the back node, the new back node. So, 
Um, um, there's a little bit of a more description of how, how you might approach um, um, doing those. So. Um, one final word on this, and then I'm going to kind of stop the video, and then I'm going to uh, uh, go off to get uh, individual questions here. Um, I see a lot of people when when they see the bubbling word, especially uh, here, but actually for both this one and the MQ for the array base, actually end up in implementing a bubble sort. But you shouldn't need to do a full bubble sort like we talked about in sorting here, uh, which is an n squared algorithm, because the in queue method for a priority queue, the, the, the queue, if you're keeping it in sorted order, is already sorted except for that one value that you're trying to now in queue, uh, put into the queue, right? So, so you shouldn't have to do a complete sort. You should just have to uh, insert that new value into its correct location uh, in the already uh, sorted you know, linked list or array, right? So you should only need a loop that executes at most, you know, in times, um, you know, to either swap the, the values in the array or to search through the linked list to insert your new node into the correct position. So, uh, but in each case, you should be able to do it in one pass through the, the, the values that you have in the array or the list. So, um, All right, so yeah, I kind of wanted to wrap this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Uh, I will, uh, I'm gonna stick on here because uh, I had some questions here that I wanna work with uh, some of the students on here. So don't go away, uh, you guys are on here, but uh, let me go ahead and stop this uh, and get this posted. Um, you know, I, I expect this assignment is tougher than uh, the previous one or definitely the one before this one, uh, but I expect everybody should get the first three and then we'll see how people can do on um, the the you know these priority queue ones, right? So, so they do get a little bit tricky. You will have to think about these, you know, be, you know use pencil and paper, uh, try things out. Um, but uh, but yeah, and, and as usual, send questions by email um, if you want hints on you know show me your code, and if you want hints on um, what you might want to look at uh, if you get stuck on these. Um, all right. So let me go ahead and uh, post this video um, and I will see those of you that are um, watching this offline later then.